Now that you've created your GigaFlange, I'm going to show you how to open it up in EdgeCam, and that will create all of the NC code for you. Yeah! So click Open, and locate your file. I called mine GigaFlange. Open it up. It shows it on the side view. If you right-click and pull it down, then you can see it on the 3D view, isometric view. Remember with the yo-yo, we had to set the milling engraving bit to, we set it to the center of the yo-yo. We're going to identify this bottom left corner here as the 0, 0, 0 point. So we first have to tell it that there's something there. We click stock fixture. Remember you can pause this video at any time if I'm going too fast. Make sure it says automatic stock and that's about it. And now you can see there's a line around this outside thing, this light blue line. Next thing you need to do is set the CPL, that's the 0, 0, 0 um, position. So we want to set it as an origin and we're going to identify it through three points. Work plane should be mill. Click OK. So I can't find this corner always. It's kind of hard to find it. So if I right click and rotate this, it's really easy to find it there. So we choose the bottom left first, then bottom right, then top left, and then back to where we started. And this red arrow is the X direction, the green is the Y. The blue is a Z and it's right in that corner. You should rotate yours around and make sure it's right in that corner. If it's not, you're going to have to redo it. And you can redo it by going to Edit, Delete CPL, and then Geometry, Create CPL, Start it over. So now that we've created our 000, we need to find all the features. So click Feature Finder. Make sure this is set to Auto. And click OK. And if you look over here on the left, it's identified all those individual spots. So we're good. Now we go to Manufacture Mode. And the discipline should be set to mill. Machine tool to ProLight 1000. So those are the two things you need to set. Note that it's also in absolute mode. That's our G90 mode. It is not an incremental or relative mode. It's not a G91. We're going to leave it at G90. In case we need to do any uh, edits to it, it's a little bit easier to edit um, in the middle of code at G90. So we have our part set. The first thing we're going to do is profile this groove out. Profiling identifies an edge and it just traces it. So if we click here on profiling and then we gotta find that edge and it looks like that's my 2D boss. It's my number two. So I click it once, left click it once and hit enter twice. And the tool that we're gonna use, we're gonna pretend that we're using three different tools to do all of these things. So we'd have multiple tool changes. So we're gonna set this thing to uh, leave all of these as they are, but then set this tooling to a feed rate of 20, a plunge rate of 10, and a speed of 4,000. The diameter of the profiling bit is an eighth inch, so it's 0.125. And then we go over to depth, and we're going to have it do a cut depth of 0.125. So it's going to cut an eighth at a time, and then it will go to the next eighth. So you may need to rewatch that to see it. I've also copied all of this information onto that Google Doc for reference if you want to see them all printed out there quickly. So we click OK and you can see that eighth inch tool comes in here. The groove is exactly an eighth inch so that cuts it perfect. That's the reason why we chose that tool. The next one that we want to do is the big hole here. So we're going to rough that. So we click roughing and find that it's number 5 2D pocket. Click it once, hit enter twice. And we want to keep this at a climb, 50% step over. That means you're cutting half the thickness of the bit all the way around. And we're going to set the tooling to a feed rate of 20, a plunge of 10, speed of 3,000 because it's a little bit bigger bit. So doing speeds and feeds, that's what. Um, we would come up with something a little slower. And the diameter of this is 0.5. The depth cut increment is going to be set at 0.1. So we click OK. And now you can see this big honking fatty bit sticking in there. So I'm going to right click and rotate this around. And I can see my tool is coming in on this dotted line. It's profiling in and out. Then I have a different tool coming in. If we had a bazooka expensive machine that did automatic tool changes that'd be sweet it do all this for us but we don't next thing we need to do is we need to do the hole for milling so 
let's do whole operation for milling and we won't be doing this one uh, in our project later on but I'm just going to show you how this one works so we click hole for milling and we select the points so let's go down to where those are looks like blind hole and then hit enter looks like that was an enter just one time and at this point we check this screen make sure it's good it should be clearance of 0.25 level is 0 we want it to be blind go to the center spot yours might be set at none so click center drill we're gonna drill the center of the holes and with an initial depth of 0 so make sure this is 0 your plunge feed is gonna be 10 diameter is 0.25 and speed is 4000 so set all of these as they are then click OK and you can see this tool comes in so we have all the tools coming in and milling and let's preview this so if you click up here simulate machining click that and I'm going to slow this down a little bit and click play and you can see it profiles first twice around to get both depths and then it mills out with a half inch bit and the quarter inch drills all of them into there. Now mine came in twice because I actually had a uh, an error before I made this video. Yours should probably come in just once uh, I'm guessing. So that looks good. At that point um, you should take a screenshot of this picture and you can kind of move this thing around um, but if you screenshot it just as it was that would be just fine. So remember you can go into Microsoft Word and then do a screenshot of this and then you'll use this for the report that you're going to create.